All right. I am going to go over uh, blending again in this video here. Someone requested that. Be one second. Um, thank you very much for watching the videos. And again, if you have any questions, you can send it to uh, my email. Um, it's n i i i a t r e c at gmail dot com. Uh, I keep forgetting this YouTube. So uh, on the YouTube. I think we'll have a way to um, when we have our forums that'll come up um, for some of the people that kind of work in the um, I shouldn't say work I mean I'll just say animators and artists um, we have a lot of different discussions we have about um, like shorts things that we see things that are cool things that caught our attention primarily in I would say in the animation field or shorts some cool kind of art as far as like I wouldn't say pop culture but artists that have that animated uh, animation type of feel and we are going to get some people from across the uh, the waters that are going to come in we'll start having discussions about how they work and things like that in uh, the those Asian markets that are always awesome to look at and then no, they're working and how they pretty much do everything they do on projects I think I had a discussion about this before anytime I'm discussing anything about I don't know projects or the way that work is handled uh, some people may think it's coming from a negative place it's not it's just to show the variations and the different methods also when you do see the art where you have a someone's basically writing a script but they're not really an artist but they have an idea of what they want it to look like so there are I want to see three major places that you want to go for like Japanimation or animation type style you know renders and, and, and art style when it comes to uh, shows that may be animated and the discussion was about the variety in different ways or when these writers come in uh, it's not really anybody's fault as far as the art style because basically when they come in they kind of look at what works that's why a lot of times is when you see that it hits the uh, the American market a lot of the characters look similar in some way right it's coming from one type of studio or in some cases the studio might just be doing a part of it and then another um, uh, how do you describe those colorists and that art? Because you, you basically you could have the the artist. That's the person that's gonna be basically drawing out and modifying characters, you know. If they are a script writer, they're probably going back and forth having meetings with uh the artists that'll be okay, this is the kind of character you like. Do you, you know, how do you want it to look? Is this what you're looking for? Things like that. So sometimes they're together and sometimes it it's they're not right the what was the other thing um someone said and, and again this is not a um i'm not blaming anybody for this i'm just saying this is everything that i'm saying is because of how the market works it's not be like oh well if they're doing this then that's bad or negative so when we do have discussions about it it's never to like blame anything it's to show that how these uh, like we had a question about how these things get made uh, in any market and when you when you look where you when you're not the artist 
and you are the person coming in with the story, they may look at a, a, um, a, another feature from um, something they saw on television and they want to adapt that art style. And there's nothing wrong with that because technically they're 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 basically I don't know how do I say this this like an A and R would be for music right and 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 there's different placements for people like that where you have a person that has the idea has an idea of what he wants it to look like um, and they have the script all ready to go right but they may not be able to draw exactly like they they see it in their head and that happens a lot that's why a lot of big movies or like I think Alien did that but you'll see um, he, they may go out and look at different um, artists out there that can capture what's inside of his um, uh, Cameron's brain right because whenever he sees it he'll be like that's what it is because a lot of times they may not be able to draw it fully draw it out but they'll be able to kind of uh, do like a rendering like a sketch of you know where the curve should be and and that happens a lot so um, I'm never a person that's negative in any way so anything I'm saying it's not a negative it's just basically just laying out exactly how a lot of this works so um, there was a, somebody had a question about like vice versa I don't really my brain doesn't think like that um, I don't really I never grew up like that where my parents were not like, oh be be negative well, I'm I'm never negative because of the kind of way they taught us to uh grow up and a lot of times I will see this where these pages are going like you know uh verses this style versus this style so when I put the verses, I don't want anyone to ever think like I have a, tr uh, I'm picking uh, one or the other. I'm just saying these are the two styles that you may see. And this may be a reason why not to be like, oh, well, that's bad. I don't think like that. So just wanted to put out there. Someone send me, a, um, what was it? A, tw um, a, tw a Twitter about it. So if you're that kind of person that's negative, this, whatever we're doing over here, probably not going to be something you like. So, um, I don't, I don't really care for negativity. I don't really have a lot of negative people in my life. So when people have questions like that, I, I do understand it, but it's not, it's, it's, it, how do I say it? It's kind of foreign to me to be able to think like that because I don't. If something, if I don't like something, I'm not going to see what you're doing. I'm not going to your page. I'm not going to your Twitter to say why I don't like what you're doing. That never made sense to me. So I don't, I don't adopt that kind of behavior when it comes to that or just life in general. I don't. I, I like to have people to have the freedom. They want to do whatever they like and say what they like. I do believe there's consequences if you say stuff, but that I think that's part of it like you know if you're brave enough to say things that you know that may be controversial whatever comes with that it's something that you created so but yeah I'm not um the, the verses on one of those my my videos doesn't mean uh, bad it <laughs> just means different and just leave it leave that like that so I appreciate the email I'm um, sorry I, I appreciate the tweet and I understand where you're getting at because it could be seen that way but I, I just want to make it clear that my brain does not function like that. So anything I do when it comes to uh, any, I won't even say, is it my opinion? Or was I just laying out how those things work? I don't know. I'm rambling. I've been working all day. Sorry. Um, but we're going to go to blendings uh, here real quick. And uh, when you hear me rant, I apologize. It's just when you're thinking about something all day and you're trying to get the words together I'm not gonna be like, oh let me write this down and and usually I don't respond because I don't, I don't like the back and forth so um, I want to make that clear 
So if you got upset with me about the versus this and you thought I was choosing this over this, it wasn't that. We are having a discussion about, you know, th how things may get made and, and, you know, what 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 the difference is between like the studio and the person writing the script, things like that. So when you do see things that look similar, uh, it's not really they because some people in the oh they're. I see that style everywhere. Of course, yes, because not everyone is is drawing it. They're writing a script, and the, and I always tell everyone this all the time. Care what it looks like. It's the story that you're telling, and this is very true about anything. That's why you could look at South Park and they make billions of dollars. But I remember when that came out, people were looking at it like, "What is this for kids?" Right? So I don't care what art looks like whatever you decide to do I hope it works because I think everybody should be able to do the kind of art they want and, and stick to it a lot of my teachers when I was I, not a lot of my teachers some of the art teachers right they have this thing in their head where they were like well this is not you know traditional right and a lot of times it was like well no one's ever gonna buy that and then I see all these it's like these animated shorts where there's just a pencil drawing but they've animated a pencil drawing then you see things like South Park where that came out right you see all these different different styles but the thing about it is it's always going to be the story for me personally I think that's all you need so whenever that does you know hit home for you and people are saying oh well you why does it look like that you know most artists don't think like that anyway They'll look at what you're doing. If there are an artist, they're going to be, okay, it's different. And that's what you want. <laughs> but uh, a lot of times people are just like, oh, well, I'm going to go to his page and explain to him why he's wrong. <laughs> but, yeah, I appreciate it, though. And anyone that sends out uh, emails, even if they are uh, challenging something they may have thought I said, I like that too because then I can come back and I can explain it but yeah my just for future reference my brain doesn't really work with like that when it comes to being negative so if, if that's how you've seen it I, I do apologize for that uh, did I go yeah I think I did a video over the, eye, uh, the eyes but I'll do it again here The funny thing is, when you're making these YouTube videos, not everyone has seen the video that you did the one thing on. So I'm, I'm learning to like do it over and over again, just in case, because they may click on something based on how I title it, and they may not even see any of the other videos. And um, I had some help from the YouTube per, um, people there that explained it. So well, that doesn't. So if I do it one time, is that can I repeat it? Yes, you can, because most people may not see it based on your title. So, YouTube was like, "Hey, get your titles, this, you know, good." And then, um, again, they went back to things like a video a day or more. Like they want content. So, that was the other um, thing they said. And uh, if anyone knows this about uh, the YouTube, basically the YouTube, I'm just going to be putting my feature on the YouTube. And the people that are signed up to YouTube, there'll probably be a special thing. Most of the people probably don't know uh, who I am or what I do, which is fine. But the reason why I went to YouTube is because um, when you get these meetings, they want they want to be able to see something. Like they want to see if you can put something together and put it on on uh, the YouTube and it work so um, that's why I'm going to go this route because I think it'll be uh, uh, better to do it that way and this is the other thing uh, if anyone uh, is is or if I get meetings I always make this clear probably the first thing that I do because I believe in it I won't even care about the money for the first for the first one right so if the story is good and, and what I'm saying 
in the story is uh, I think it'll be um, different from a lot of other things and it kind of can expand into different and more stories so I'm not trying to get rich off the first one I just I just want to be able to uh, get the backing I need and then we can go forward Oh, uh, yes, I am in, uh, I gotta go, I should start reading these out. Uh, yes, I am Florida, uh, in Florida, but no, um, it hasn't hit where I am. I'm pretty much in the middle of Florida. If you cut it in half sideways, um, I'm right in the middle. So, but we haven't got anything. We have, we had a couple of, you know, rain, rainy days, but nothing, nothing too crazy. All right, since I'm doing this video again here for the eyeball. Let's go ahead and do it the right way. So basically what I do is I have the the, the back. And then I'll have a second one here. Which is going to be kind of like the, gl uh, the glow. Uh, then I have another one. which I will have the I'll change the ampacity like so right around there Dig it a little bigger and then I'll have these two pieces one two like so and then I'll have this also this will be uh, I'll say Right about 86 but this is the other black piece so and again you can adjust the colors based on what you want it to look like so uh, whenever I stack them this one goes here like so and then we have to make a donut real quick and how I make donuts here I just do it like so wherever I want the and it looks right about there and this is how I do a lot of um, I don't know I, I named it molding uh, mold molding because um, when I'm using the tools here and I'm making shapes I just basically take this paint bucket <clears throat> and increase the shapes I want instead of going through up there so oh, we've got to take this out so basically what I'll do is I'll put one on top of the other like so right just two circles and based on how thick I want the outline make it right about I think that's right about there should be good and basically I take some clay which is the paint bucket in this case and I just fill like so and then I got my donut so this is going to be on top alright so let's see what kind of color so let's see that's blue right so let's maybe get it some aqua colors here and see how we like it like so and then these other ones here uh, so I change them around sometimes I'll flip it sideways and then do it that way so we'll do one like that for this real quick like so um, so when we start playing with this this uh, the blending part might make it a little bit lighter but when we start doing that blending part of it you'll start to see how the pupil will come about here so based on that how how luminous it is right so it looks right about there All right, then we got this here which is our half circle oh, bring it to the top and we'll just play around with it that way Okay. 
and what I do is I kind of play with it until I get something that I like and we'll just change this as well to the side here and again you flip it around kind of hard because um, you can go in and lock stuff down when you're trying to play around with these but I usually don't so let's take this one here and let's see uh, how about uh, right about there all right so let's get this here something disappeared where did it go Oh, it's through there. It's just real thin. Thin, thin, thin. All right. All right. Donut. All right. And then you can blend these as well. And blend this here little bit is, and it don't have to be the same blend you just kind of play around with it until you get something you like and maybe a little bit more like that and this is the one that goes here sure the donuts on top color mirror so that it's on top of everything when you start blending and playing around with it so the first thing I use is the you know what we gotta make that thinner that's probably wrong I'm not liking the way it looks Thin, maybe a little bit more right there. And again, we're just gonna create the donut by just doing a fill, which will fill out the outlines. So when do you ever you start um, kind of messing around with the color that you want? When you start the blur effect on this part here, sometimes what I'll do is undo, uh, create another one, and just really thin it. I put it on top. So. If you thin this one out here, like so, you can start to play around with the colors of eye all you like. So whatever blend you're going to do, 
on the edges. We'll stick to well, let's change this. Make it look a little bit better. This one was the solid one, I think. Yep, that's what it was. should be on top and this one here now based on whatever you decide to do with the the colors this is weird so it's kind of bothering me a little bit um, but you can play around with it all you like I think I went over this before the uh, whenever you the lighter you make the colors uh, the more human they look so and so kind of keep that in mind whenever you're kind of playing around to see what you want as far as the final and then we just have a uh, another black dot you'll make it you'll change the input uh, the impacity a little bit on that and remember if you do it like this usually I use this for monster eye but if you bring it to the top and you just want to like lower this here like so which one am I on uh, I do that all the time Something's on top. You'll just lower this until you kind of get a feel for where you want it to be. Let's change this a little bit. this a little bit more for the ridges and then you can uh, change the pupil size all you like or play with this as much as you like as well and it'll blend it in however you like and you can kind of play around with it until you get something you like and then the last part of it make this darker because I know what I'm going to use it for this circle oh uh, this eye is good for a monster that's why I'm making it a little bit weird
Yeah. And last thing here, you just put a reflect like so. And on that as well, I usually will lower this just a tad. Right about there. Um, what I did notice, like whenever you're doing a human eye, these edges here, um, I always usually see them as like red or a little bit darker on the edges. So if you are doing a human eye, uh, that part is usually on the outside, it's going to be a little bit uh, darker on one and then uh, based on where the eyelids is. So that's what I'm going to just show you that real quick here. So whenever you do a human eye, um, it, it's a little bit more defined than like a, a monster's eye would be. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And this, when you're doing a human eye, you can take the blur off like so. And <clears throat> so it won't look so weird, right? Or whenever you do lighten it up or darken it up, um, sometimes I'll do a fade for the other one. Uh, so if you're doing a, uh, sometimes I'll do a different reflector here, duplicate, like larger, and I'll take that all the way down, like so. So whatever you do, have this clear on top. You, it gives the, like it's a shine there, right? So when you look at it, it looks like glass, kind of. You know, if you look at it from a distance, right? So you can do that as well if you you just don't want to do just those colors, right? And you can play around with this part too. Remember, it's going to be really thin. And based on the color of your eye, you'll see how that either pops or it doesn't. And I'll show you that here quick. So if we get these a little bit darker, a little slight blur. The lighter you make this, the more you'll see it kind of pop out because it looks blended. So let's see, like so, right? So you have a lot of different choices. Uh, I'm not gonna, I don't really like that lens kind of look, uh, but you can do it that way. And also you can change the color on this. Sometimes when you do that, say your characters in like a darker area or something like that you can kind of adjust whatever you want based on where the character is uh, but for the most part you know you can keep it like that and this is just a plain you know eye and again when you do the outsides to either one you can play around with it as, all, as much as you like so let's say here right so whenever you see this that light uh, fixture you can dim all of the other ones Let's see here real quick right so whenever you do the blending oh that's the top layer why am I doing that is that the right one I think it is please nope still not the right one all right let's move this circle out of the way like so. Um, so sometimes what you'll see is uh, someone doing a uh, line, but they're all like sequence, right? So do this here. And just remember, like the the pivot point in that, uh, point everything towards the center. So whenever you do have the other colors, you come in. Let me 
Let's go ahead and edit duplicate. And if you notice, this right here usually is a lot of these lines that some of the um, art makes. It'll be a little bit lighter. And you can play around with that as well. It's up to you. Uh, doing a lot of these can be time consuming. But as you guys know, I always do the one thing that kind of helps this. And uh, again, this might not even uh, be um, uh, needed at all. But you can use the that technique and then you'll just have one other piece that'll kind of come in and remember these are uh, they get to be lighter uh, usually these could be close to the color of the uh, the eyeball and just remember we have the ring our donut ring all the way at the top Where's our donut? There we go. And you can make these kind of match with the the outside edge of the eye. And I'm not going to do the whole thing because I'm not doing that for uh, this particular character. Just have it close as possible. And um, this, the, these are not centered correctly, but the more you make it ease, the tighter you will make the. You can make that uh, group. So let's duplicate all of. Them here so you'll basically do this but you want to make sure that the all of these when they do line up even if they're very very close together uh, you got to make sure they're all pa uh, pointing to uh, the center mark here in the middle of the eye right and they all should come in that way whenever you do uh, as many as you want to do, I guess. Um, but make sure they're all angled the same way. To where everything will be pointing to the circle. And usually these are white. And don't worry about the, uh, this right now. You can cover it up uh, later. I think I told someone else this before. If you see where this pivot X is, what you would usually want to do here is change this pivot to here. It'll make it easier for you to uh, kind of line up everything uh, with the circle because then you can move it that way right and then when you do have your still blue eye change it and make that lighter and these are going to be underneath. And these are going to be a, uh, a lot thinner, so keep that in mind as well. But I'm not going to just go alert. So, so basically, that's how you would uh, do it. You would just basically make sure that all of these are going to be painting to the center of the eye. Let's change this here. Put it there. Move it. And again, you can play around with stuff like this. And let's move that next here. 
and you'll try to just get it as close to possible. And moving these here, point this pivot next to so, and then you'll just keep doing that over and over again for as many of the these lines you want, and then you can kind of pull them down as far as the uh, the ampacity on it. Make sure those edges are gone. Now, if you're doing a like some kind of super bench uh, thing with this, you can take your time. <laughs> it's gonna some I've seen sometimes they do it all the way around the whole eye instead of it just being one kind of fade in color. And that, I know that's time consuming, but if you have the time and you really want to make sure it looks like you want it to look, you can just keep doing that. And these are usually, again, these will be uh, usually a lot lighter. And then whenever you do the uh, ampacity on it, even it, with the blur, you'll be able to blend it in. And don't forget that your ring, that's why you, you make the ring, because it's going to be on top of uh, everything. And again, you'll just keep doing as many as you like. If I was to do this, I would probably have it that thin. But that's just me. But you have the option. Basically, you'll do that, and then you'll go all the way around the eye. And then, when if you want to bring all of them, you know, down, you can blend it as much as you like based on that as well. All right, that's for the eyeball, we'll stop playing around with that. And I need to get back to uh, that one eyeball that I liked. So uh, I'll remember how many things I hope there's 20 you can send uh, Inkscape up to where it'll basically save uh, save all of those things for you so when you do go to uh, edit just go do undo history Sometimes I'm confused by these because I can't remember if it goes the top or the bottom part. I can't remember. Rotate, let's see here. Maybe here. Nope. Here. Nope. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Here. Here. Okay, which one did I do brown? Uh, I think I might have done brown. Oh, we'll keep it like that for now. Um, the other thing was the uh, the, the shadowing. Um, I pretty much do the same pretty much as for all the characters. So when it comes to shaving, uh, save shaving, uh, shading, um, you just have the side of the face, and you'll have uh, different under the eyeball. So usually what I'll do is I'll have this right about the angle where I want that forehead to be. 
you know, kind of outline, right? So then you can. And you can curve whatever you like based on that. Um, but the, the under the eye ones is easy as well. So I'll show that here. And again, I'm just using my old trick of the fill for like a piece of clay. And then you'll want to make that a little bit darker. Now, sometimes you can do it all the way where you think that nose line is going to be coming in. But again, it's up to you. Just make sure it's below. So, usually I'll have this color will be a little bit off from basically the forward head color. This one here, blend that, get that out of the way. I'll have it a lot darker. And it'll come around to the front, or the, I guess you say bottom of the eye as well. And you can make adjustments as you like. And, um, However you want to blend it will be up to you as well. Come on, it's not reaching that. There we go. So whenever you start doing this, uh, this eye here, and I don't, you can, but I don't make a line on the the nose part. But if you know how the, the face kind of works, you'll see this sh that shadow, right? It'll bump right up against the uh, that nose part. So this center uh, here. So whenever you do blend this in, um, you'll have that here, uh, along with the, get that right about there. And um, sometimes I will do get it a little bit closer because technically this whole side should be a little bit dim. But I w uh, would use a different uh, a different clay. When you do blend this in, you have the choice of getting it as uh, light or as dark as you want it. Or if you want to go for that sick look, meaning ill or whatever, you'll see sometimes a red around the eye part and then you can uh, use that as blend too so if you do it darker and you want to blend it that way you can do that and just have it surrounding the whole eye so still making sure you don't blend past that nose that uh, that nose line that runs here, um, but that's an option as well. So when you blend it, you 
you can either make it look like uh, if the character's um, like skin color is uh, lighter, you can use that uh, as well. Uh, but for this one, or this particular character, it's going to be darker here. And when I do go back, because there's all kinds of things that you can do here as far as the chin. Um, a lot of times, just based on whatever the character is, I will lighten up like uh, the, the cheek part. Right where I think like, you know, you could do usually the cheek part here. So usually you can make that a little bit red. And then when you blend it in, make it light if you want it. And as small as you want it as well. So if Sometimes if characters in the cold, you may want to use that effect too uh, on each side of the cheeks. So usually right about there. Uh, and always remember to blend everything, even if you have the, uh, the blur to set to, you know, one. You'll see it kind of blend back. So when you do pull back from it, um, if you look here, because we had shade all the way up to where, right? Right about here, right? So when you do do the blending part, however you want that nose to uh, to look, when you pull back from it, uh, you should see that, that white part go all the way down to where the nose is, right? So, and again, you can bring this down as much as you like, it's up to you. Um, some people, depicting on if the character has a side shot where you know you want half of the face kind of blended in or for one side I would say Let's move these blends out the way it will interfere isn't that it yeah that's it so you can change this as much as you like and as bright as you want it to be. And you do have options on the other one. On the outline you can make it white. So if we push this here, I always forget. Make sure eyebrows at the top when you do do your like your final blending. So this here, you can make it as white as you like. It's up to you. And when you do go into blur it a little bit. bring that as all the way down uh, usually those lines will be right around the cheek where the, the face is right like that angle here usually when we get to the chin part this should be a lot uh, darker right so you would just basically figure out you know where that fade line should be right all the way down this one here technically um, since we're just playing around and then when you do go in to blur it and sometimes you don't need to blur it you just need to have a good curvature on there and everything you need But 
when you blur it. Um, you can see this outline kind of changed all the way around the side of it. And you can do that for either side, right? So and some people do this because their character might not be changed as far as the lighting um but uh you know i keep them i and again i use uh inkscape kind of like a uh, storage for all the pieces that i ever create and i just usually will move them around as needed and usually each inkscape is a particular character so you know i just save everything there that i need so if i need to come back for like anything that i've already created i have the ability to do that and i thought what was that else? okay yeah the other one is going to be um the shadow part where we where people were asking me about the shadow it's going to be a preference uh honestly because you know whatever you decide to uh have your look like uh, look look like your look look of the, your uh, your your animation um, watch some other uh, you know cartoons or whatever you'll see a lot of different styles when it comes to that usually for me um, I will make it real black just depending on how bright the light is um, but when you do have that here right so since this particular character has like a uh, helmet on, right? And again, this doesn't have to be uh, too perfect. And a lot of times, you know, I'll do a curvature wherever I see the curves are. And again, most people don't <laughs> don't even care about this it'll probably be like an artist preference that you know you want to have that shadow or whatever so you that shadow would always be wherever there's you know uh, something hanging over top All right so usually the way I tint it it'll be a little bit right when it gets to a, a dark that I don't like I just stop it at that point right um, when people do the lighting, a lot of times it's just for, um, what do I want to say? Mm, like, a, I guess lighting effect, right? So you, you may see in instances like one whole side of the face is dark. Uh, you can do it that way as well. Um, so I'll love to you. And then you can play around with all the, the looks you like. Um, you'll see this here, you know, sometimes an artist will do something really like, you know, contrast to whatever the other side is doing, right? And again, you can blend this any way you like. Now, we may be in a war zone, right? Maybe it has black soot on the side of the face, right? Like so. And uh, said before, when we do lighting for this particular one, uh, a lot of times if I want to depict uh, injuries or whatever, I'll create the, the 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 injury, but I will try to put uh, red uh, in the eyes as the contrast, and I'll usually keep it at a half measure so let's and then you have the ability to come in and do all kinds of different things this is on top of everything so when you do do like if he has a black eye or you know injured Where's my eyeball? There we go. Now 
Now, a lot of times when I'm doing this, the uh, make sure whatever shape you want it to have, it's all up to you. Um, I will have uh, the this cut off here. So this ring again. I'll copy it. You know what? Let's take all of this out here. Okay. So okay, there we go. Up on the move. Alright, this on top of that. So the eyeball should be where it needs to be. Oh, I know why. Cause <laughs> I took the skin off. That's why it's not doing what it's supposed to do. Okay, I guess we can play around with that later. We can use this skin here. It's not a clay piece, is it? Nope. Uh, remember, whenever you're blending and you don't see your outline, um, there in, in Inkscape you can um, have a constant outline. Uh, I, I usually do not. I do it this way. And when I'm looking for the the line, you'll see this little arrow here. It'll change it to a fist wherever I, whenever I do find it. Is it a fist or a hand? So, don't like that. This here, and always uh, double check your layer so you're not forgetting anything. want this, that part on top. So when you're doing this, you just want to be sure that you do have the the black piece on top of everything. So when the blend, you kind of hide it behind the eye, like it's 
not there. Like all your black outlines, you just do. Make sure that the outline is always on the top. So um, on the the eye part, basically what I'll do is why isn't this totally black? No. Oh. So on the corner of the eye, I usually have oh, messed that up. Update. Uh, if you've seen this already, I do apologize, but I'm taking the YouTube advice and just make sure not all those videos. So on this outline, um, you can make this as light as you like. Or if you can just blur it in, usually I'll keep it like this where I have that curve. like so in the corners of the eye and again always look at you can always go on uh, you know I don't know, <laughs> Cartoon Network you can look at different styles of you know different ways they you can do it um, but this is the kind of uh, eyes I usually will I'll do So you'll have these here, and so that it's curved in the corner, like that. And then we're right, you know, kind of looking at putting the eye and things like that. I'll usually have a, uh, a lid. I have everything locked, that's why it keeps pairing everything. But, uh, usually I'll have a eyelid here. and then some excess back. So, So the eyelid part,
So when you do have those shadows over on the other side. And you do have the eyelid. I usually make it a little bit the eyelid a little bit different from the other color. And again, you just gotta make sure when you're doing this eyelid it's underneath your black outline. And so and this as well, um if you've ever noticed, usually this piece will be a little bit curved like so and again whatever style you like and you may see two different things when people are doing this here and I'll show you that and a lot of times uh, it may be just before uh, like a, like a special effect sometimes no more than just that and again on this one you can make it as low as you like So whenever you do see the eyelid, usually you'll may see two tones to that. But you can play around till you get kind of the one you want. And then for the last part here, if you ever notice, usually you'll you know you may see uh, a shadow because there is a shadow underneath the uh, the lid and I usually make that gray and I usually play around with it a little bit get it to kind of what I want it to look like and I'll make sure that my that black outline like so And usually I'll kind of play around with this, um, you know, as dark as you want it to be. So it falls on like this, and then I blend this here. And you can also use this, you know, character sleep or something like that, or you're trying to do some kind of dramatic effect with the side of the eyes you have that you can do that as well and you can kind of play with that to see you know how you want it to look uh, overall this one here whenever you do do your final like I said before we had the, the shadow make sure you remember that shadow should be over the eye just do that one. Mm -mm 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 so when you do go back to blend, oh, remember you. On me, I, I'm, I usually make two pieces, but if you want to just do one. And just remember where our nose line is, where you kind of want to stop. And then when you pull back from it, you should, you know, because of the shadow and the shading part of it, you should just see that nose kind of blend in there. And then this here. 
We'll just blend this out. So when you do finally blend this here, and I usually will have to blend all the way to kind of where the chin is here. So and then there's extra thing that you can do here show you that for the face uh, you can go in and start looking at the uh, the eyebrow here where it does have a little shadow And again, whatever your blending style is, you have the ability to come up with your own. So nothing I'm doing is like edged in stone anymore. And for that secondary blur here, you know, you kind of want to think about where you want the uh, at the start uh, when I put this into moho I uh, I'll usually have the the whole thing blended already so but I'll do it piece by piece so you you have the ability there so whatever your final color is um, you can change it but I usually will have that and then um, a shadow underneath the Kind of, I guess we can pull from this here. And you can kind of play around with it. I don't ever have the shadow like here. Sometimes I do, but it'll be real thin for this little piece here. Because uh, technically it should be everything on the other side. Uh, but just to make it pop out a little bit, you can, you know, go crazy with it if you like. And this part as well, on this edge, and it just comes up a little bit. And then you can blur it as much as you like. For me, usually I'll keep it somewhat grayish and a little dark and then uh, you can play around with it all you like um, I think I went through this before the key to the eyeball is or when you're making it you're going to see the, the, the character uh, jump out or look like the character's looking at you is how I kind of do it you know I wait for it to kind of come out and and this you know where it's looking at me and um, I, on these blurs whenever you do one side edit undo move this is the top one On the uh, the the 
lenses I do. You don't have to do it like I'm doing here. It's just something I I usually will have it. Kind of cut up that one here. And again, you could uh, play around with it here. And whenever you do see the shadow, um, based on where, I guess the, where the character is, that's up to you. Um, but you you may see this on a lot of different things. Most of the time, when I see this, it's halfway, where they have the shadow, you know, like so. And then these here, for me, are usually. You know, a little bit off of the gray, but gray, a little bit darker usually. Uh, when you're doing your layers, make sure you know what's on top whenever you do do your final blend so you're not kind of, you get into the, uh, start doing the animation. Whenever you start, uh, you know, finalizing the information and everything, <laughs> finalize the information, uh, importing it into Moho for the animation. all of uh, your shading and everything like that whenever you're done um, usually when I'm kind of finished with everything I just separate it all and so on that one it will allow you to change your blend and, and you know, change all kinds of different colors for his blending in and everything like that. This was just a rough, um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, just remember that, you know, everything has layers to it and you're going to make adjustments, uh, adjustments as you like. All right. I think that's all I needed to, oh, um, great if you draw something out and you're trying to uh, get this a little bit perfect as far as reading the colors you can go to trace map and uh, you can choose the gray option because it'll do is it'll give you a better outline uh, so I'm, I'll say it's what 10 colors and smooth it out. Uh, remove background just means removing all the white in the uh, the image. So click on OK. And usually Inkscape is pretty good at this, but what you'll do is you'll have all your outlines here so when everything is vectorized uh, I usually come in and just do a black and white like cleanup um, sometimes I'll keep these for shadows just depends but once I get this you know vectored out Mm -mm -mm. I'll usually pick the thinner one, but one's the easiest to kind of start working on. And then make sure I f don't forget this color.
and you can use your reference if you like I do that as well sometimes just get it as close as you can um, whenever I do do this here and, and I'm fixing like the the outline uh, I'll change it to a different color so I can really see that everything outlined I usually do red uh, let's do lighter cuz this is can't really see the contrast. yeah that's a little bit better so um that's pretty much it on that so when I have my my outline here you just gotta go back and just you know do the coloring and it's pretty self-explanatory let's see here a lot of times I won't you know technically you don't have to draw it out but if you're trying to create any kind of line um, sometimes a lot easier you can just go to the edge of it here and just pull them all the way up and if you want to do it like a thicker outline you can do it that one and then when you get to these paths here that are supposed to be open let's see there's two ways I usually do this I'll either cut it out or I won't but if I come here on my original image this is, or the drawing of it you can kind of click in for the, all the shadows as well by using just the, uh, the paint filler and like so oops it's too much edit undo edit undo there we go so when you're when you're doing the paint bucket be aware that the lower you get this you know the closer we'll get to just filling in where you need it to be filled so you can click on those and just get the, the pieces here that you need And let's go back to black here really quick like so then select and uh, the other stuff you can technically do by hand but I don't want to make this video too crazy Too crazy long, I mean. And the belt. Um, when I do the fill here, I usually have that a lot thinner. But again, you can use the paint bucket here. Gonna make sure it matches the belt fill. Above the line, and you'll push this to the back. Well, when you go here to select, and you want it to be below the black outline, you just click here, and it'll push it back for you. Sometimes you can make changes on the uh, the drawing as well. Especially if you remember all the curves and everything that you have there. Cool. Mm
And again, I use the clay and the buff. Whenever you do kind of play around with this, remember you don't, nothing has to stay the same on any of it. Shadow there. Try to give this a little bit of a leather look on the side. Can just play around with whatever, whatever uh, blends you want to make. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Uh, depending on what you're doing with your uh, your art. Um, there are a lot of books on like shading and stuff like that that you can you can look up.
and again um <laughs> whenever you, uh I'm doing something that you think is not necessary to do uh you can ignore all of those <laughs> cuz usually it'll take me a while to finish but um yeah that's what you can do so whenever you want to uh just have it go through all your have everything uh, be adaptive you can just use the paint because it'll pick up most of the uh, the outlines if you're kind of close and then undo, undo if you want the threshold a little bit larger to maybe get a better piece there you could do it like that and this yeah. One was this? This is that one. Yep. And then um, once you have all your characters and you built these out, you don't really have to do it uh, ever again. So if you are doing some kind of blending or anything, you know, take your time. Don't kill yourself, or don't rush yourself. I should say. Uh, and for the the person that was asking me, he's like, oh, "What's the most uh, hated part?" I use I don't hate any of it, but if I was to say what's the what takes the longest, um, it's once you get the well for me I tr I vector all the images once I get it vectored out and uh, puppetized. That's a new word. Um, I don't I, I don't want to go back and do it again but yeah that will be the hardest rigging a uh, a character you know you draw it you vectorize it I vectorize it because you know I want that I want it to be a, a lot cleaner look so um things like that you just can take your time oh this is six eight o'clock so yeah, that's secondary. I'm trying to remember which one was the. I think it is. So this was seen. Okay, I thought I, thought I took it apart, but I guess I didn't. Um. So I'm gonna finish kind of colorizing that that image and. Um. I'll have a part two to it once everything's for the scene is finalized and vectored out and clean looking. I uh, appreciate you watching the video. I hope you guys have a great Friday and a great weekend. Bye bye.